Hi, let's take a look at some of the basic features of Excel. And um, I'm going to follow along with my presentation here and also demonstrate in Excel. So first of all, you could be using Excel 2010 or Excel 27. They're pretty similar. I'm using Excel 2010. Um, you, one of the things you should do is have your version of Excel and have it open so that you can actually um, pause the video and try things after you see them. This is the best way to learn about them. Okay, now I've already opened Excel here, and when you first open it, you get a document called a workbook, and it looks like this. Here's my workbook all open, and it's made up of spreadsheets. So you can see the tabs at the bottom. Those let me switch between sheets. Now, these are all the same, so you can't see much happening when I'm doing this switching. Uh, but if they had more information on them, you would. Uh, normally, um, well, a lot of the time, you can get by with just one sheet. But sometimes you want to do uh, more than one thing, or maybe you want a sheet for each month, say, or for each person you're keeping track of, or whatever. And in that case, multiple sheets are great. Now, if you want to change the name of a sheet, you can just double-click on the name. And... Um, I don't know, I could name this one January or whatever I want. The number of sheets you see when you first open up the um, workbook, that's a default, but an option that you can choose. And I have left it on what it came with, which was three. Okay, um, I showed you that. Oh, if you want to add more sheets, you can just click here and you can see another sheet appears. Um, deleting sheets is easy too. I'm going to right click and delete and it's gone. Okay, so let's take a look at the controls. Now in the newer versions of Excel, Microsoft has eliminated uh, menus in favor of controls that are on these things called ribbons. And the ribbon is divided into tabs, so you can see that each tab pertains to a different topic. Here's one for formulas, data, etc. The developer tab is one that we're going to be using a lot in programming. I, it doesn't show up by default when you first open up Excel, so I have a separate short presentation that shows you how to open the developer tab. Most of your most frequently used commands are going to be on the home tab. And there's also a little section at the top here with things that, that you use a lot. And you can actually add things to it. So if there's something you're doing all the time, you can put it up here in this instant access area. There's also um, sometimes little down arrows next to things. So for example here, there's a whole menu of colors that I can get to by clicking. This one sets the font color for when I'm typing information in here. Um, oh, here's one for different uh, currencies I can use if I want to format my uh, my numerical data as currency other than dollars. And so there's lots of other things like that. Here's for fill. I can choose some options and so on. So there's actually more than what appears uh, at first. The other thing is if you change the size of this window, you can see it, it changes how the things at the top are showing up. To get the best view, you have to have the, open, the window open pretty far. Uh, so keep that in mind. Okay, so um, let's take a look at the structure of the spreadsheet. So the first thing here, the spreadsheet has this grid. And it's divided into what are called cells, and each cell has a name. It's identified by its row and its column. So the column names are across the top here, and they're letters of the alphabet. And the row numbers are down the side. So um, this is cell A1, and the name shows up in this name box. So this is D7, column D, row 7. Here's G2, column G, row 2, and so on. Wherever I click, it'll show me the name of the cell I'm clicking in. And these slides just show some examples. 
All right, let's put some data in here. Suppose I put a number like a thousand into cell A1. Okay. Let's cover that up. It's a little distracting. Um, that's cool. Now, if I wanted to say format it, oh, I, I need to push return. Right now it's still in data entry mode. Now it's actually entered, and you can tell because um, things are no longer grayed out. So let's say I want to put a comma in there. Oh, I have to select it. Okay, now. There we go. Um, and this little set of instructions let me um, increase or decrease the number of digits appearing after the decimal. Um, so that's for formatting uh, numbers, and I can put them as currency. Uh, we also have things for formatting text, um, and so on. So a lot of nice options there. And uh, let me just go back to a plain old number and get rid of the decimals. Whoops, wrong one. Okay, so you can play around with that and see what each thing does. Now, um, Excel is set up to handle different types of data. The three major types could be divided into numbers, um, dates, which Excel handles in a funny way. It's a kind of number. We'll talk about that when we do data types. And strings of text, just words and stuff like that that you type. And there's various formats and, and ways of handling each of the different types of data. But most of the ordinary formatting as I was talking about, it's on the home tab. So I showed you the number formatting group. Okay, now to actually, so, so I could type data in here till I'm blue in the face, but to actually tap the power of Excel, what I need to do is um, use formulas. So let me show you an example of that. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to type the number 10, and here I'll put a 20. And now, um, what I want to do, oh, I don't want any decimal points. So, um, what I want to do here is add these two numbers. So, I want to add, first I'll put an equal sign, because you have to start a formula with equals. That's how Excel knows it's a formula and not just text. And then I'm going to add this guy plus this guy. Let's push return. Okay, I got a 30. Um, now, I want to show you some stuff here. Let, let me go back to this. And instead of adding a 1, I, I'm just going to put a 10. Okay. So, this should give me the same answer that I had there, and it does. Okay, now what I want to do is copy this and paste it. So I'm right-clicking here, and I'll just paste. All right. Now, what happened? Well, let's take a look at the formula that's in each of these cells. Remember, this was my original formula. It's 10 plus A2. This one is 10 plus A3, 10 plus A4, A5. So each time, this is row 6. It's saying 10 plus A5. What happened here is that I'm using what's called relative addressing, which is the default thing. Um, when I made this formula, I added 10 to the cell directly above the one I'm working with. So that's what Excel decided I wanted to do each time. And so you'll see here, I'm adding 10 to the cell directly above, which is A5. Now, let's, um, let's try something else here. Suppose I wrote, instead of 10, I wrote A1. Okay, and I'll just push return. And I'm going to copy this and paste it. So I'm right-clicking to get this menu. Okay, this did something quite different because, again, I'm using relative addressing. So here I've got A2 plus A3. Um, this one copied. This is A3 plus A4. Okay, A4 plus A5. So in each case, it's taking um, here it's taking the two cells immediately preceding and adding them together. 
Well, I didn't want that. I really wanted to add a one to each thing. So let's go back here. And there's a way I can make that happen. This is called um, absolute addressing. So what I do is put a dollar sign in front of my row number and my column number. And that means that I actually really want to use this particular cell. So I'll push enter to enter that formula. And now what I'm going to do is copy the formula and I'm going to paste it. And you can see I'm back to what I had before because now what I'm doing is I'm actually adding 10 each time, but now that's because there's a 10 in cell A1. And in fact, if I change this to say um, 50, you can see what happened. Um, well, let's push return. It's now adding 50 each time to what was in the cell above. So whatever I change this to um, will now be used in the formula. So this is the real power of formulas. Um, besides letting me fill in things quickly, I can do what ifs. I can say, what if I put a 50? What if it was 100? And what if I put it back to 10? Okay, so I can go through different scenarios like that. All right, now let's take a look Suppose I wanted to do the same kind of thing in another column. So you'll notice my formula here, it's fixing the column and the row. So if I would just say put some numbers in here, let's go 50 and oh, 1000. And then if I just copy this and paste. Okay, and actually what I want to do is paste it, whoops, sorry, I'll choose down to here and I'll do paste. Okay, so you can see what's happening here. Even though I put a 50 here, my formula is still using A1, it's still using the 10. Now what if I wanted it to use G1 instead? Well, I could have arranged that when I initially made my formula. Instead of making both the row and the column fixed, let's just make the row fixed. So this is saying use my same column, but use the first thing in it. Okay, so I'm going to push enter. And now I'm going to copy this formula. Whoops, if I can find it. Oh, well, let's try again here. I don't know what happened there. Enter. Okay, so I'm going to copy, and now if I paste it in here, nothing changed because uh, whether I'm using A1 absolute or relative in this comma, it doesn't matter. But what if I paste it in here? Okay, so I'm going to do paste. Now I'm using the 50, and if I look at the formula, See, the A changed to a G, but the 1 remained fixed because that was absolute addressing. So that gives you an idea of the difference between relative and absolute addressing. And let's see, I wanted to go back to here. So you can go through, uh, try typing the formulas in, try playing with them yourself. And I'm just checking the slides to make sure I got everything. And yes. Okay, and the next thing we're going to talk about is functions.